let's get started with lockdown. So, the last lecture on Monday was obviously about Hobbes, and the two of these figures go together very well. That they share a number of things in common, as I'll explain, but also that they are um, starkly in disagreement about a number of other fundamentals. So, in today's lecture, I'll speak about the, the life and times of John Locke. As with Hobbes, the political context was particularly important, the turmoil of England of that time. And I'll place particular emphasis on his work, The Two Treaties of Government, where we see again these concepts of the state of nature, which of course we looked at with Hobbes, of social contract theory, but then seeing how Locke is so different and how he is very much the kind of leading figure in terms of liberalism. Hobbes, much more sort of associated with conservatism, Locke, the, the liberal champion. Because of his views on limited government, the legitimacy of revolution, separation of powers to an extent, and also religious toleration. And then speak a bit about his influence, and also explain why there's a picture of a lion and a fox here. Hopefully that should become uh, clear a little bit later. Okay, so life and times, first of all. I should point out that as usual, if you want to interrupt at any point, please do so. So, John Locke's dates are 1632 to 1704. And so you can see that he overlaps with Hobbes. That Locke, well, considerably the younger man, but because Hobbes lived to such a, an old age and was writing about politics into late into his life, the two overlap. Locke is a, is a philosopher. But what's interesting about him is that he also has a degree in medicine. And when people look at the way that he thinks about politics, the way he looks at the world, it's been suggested that his medical training influences the, the way he thinks about knowledge. And I'll say a bit more about that in a moment. Looking at the various political philosophers we've already touched on, I've said on a number of occasions that you have these two different types. You have those that are exclusively students of politics. They distance themselves from the actual practice of politics and just think about it. Hobbes is an example of that. Machiavelli, on the other hand, I highlighted, is very much wanting to be involved in politics and seeing Writing about politics is very much a second best. Well, Locke is somewhat in the middle of those two different poles. That he's much more of a philosopher of politics, but he also was to some extent involved in it. As you can see there, acting at one point as a secretary to the Board of Trade. Now, on that political context, that, as I mentioned, is of particular importance, you have Similar to the influence on Hobbes, the most important event being the execution of the king, Charles I, on, uh, in 1649. You then have this period of the, the Republic, uh, where there is not a monarchy. But then you have the Restoration in 1660 with Charles II, who was the son of Charles I. And then after that, you have James II, who in fact was the brother of Charles II. Don't need to know too much about these historical details, but it is important because what happened then was that after the restoration of the monarchy, shortly after James II becomes king, you have the Glorious Revolution. This is where James II is forced to leave the throne. But he was a Catholic king, and it was felt that there was a risk of him betraying the country to foreign powers, to Catholic powers, and so he was forced out, and the 
um, the king, James II, is replaced by a sort of co-monarchy of William and Mary. So I mention all of this not particularly because the details are significant for us, but rather to stress the significance of the, of the context. The, this is enormous turmoil in English politics. 